You want more on the abs? You got it. Honestly, does it really matter right now? That's the problem, right? No, just about anybody can get in front of a microphone and talk about hockey. <laughs> How on earth do you get involved in something like this? It was kind of a fluke. It's funny that this podcast is going off the rails so quickly. This is from the Chief Seats, an Avalanche fan podcast from Nine News. Seated in the conference room, here are your hosts, Steve Stager and Jeff Sautel. So I'm going to start this podcast off by apologizing uh, because I feel like after the last episode we did, episode 15, I said at the end of that show, we'll see you next week. Shame. Then we didn't see you next week. Shame. Because we decided to take a week off. Do you think we freaked many people out? Eh. I, I know holiday week. I don't think anyone really yeah. noticed. Uh, welcome back from the Cheap Seats, episode 16 uh, our apologies. We decided to take a week off since we hit 15 episodes and uh, it was Thanksgiving week. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it was very nice. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe we're the good luck charm for the Colorado Avalanche because uh, here we are sitting in a Friday in the Nine News green room and the Avs are on a five game winning streak. So it, that means if they lose tomorrow night, then we pretty much have to shut the podcast down. Yeah, that's it. That's how it works. we're just wrapping it up right then and there. It's been fun, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Uh, <laughs> it, it actually has been great to watch. It's been fun yeah. hockey to watch the last few games uh they have done two of those games without Mika Rantanen and Gabe Landeskog and then Gabe's only been back for one game uh by the way you can instantly tell these guys uh impact they have on a team when Mika Rantanen his first game back in what 16 or 17 games sounds right he scores a goal yeah has a four-point night that was pretty incredible that's all right I guess and and I'm I'm going to come out and say this because I I think he's still rusty. If Would, you're watching him, he doesn't look conditioned. He doesn't look as crisp as he usually is. Even in even three games in, back from injury, which you know it, it takes a while. But, but if if eighty percent, but eighty percent, Miko Rantanen can play the way he is right. Like if that's eighty percent of the man, if he's not one hundred percent conditioned right now and he's playing like he is, look out. Yeah. Look out, NHL. I mean, you think about it. I think somebody the other day pointed out that Nathan McKinnon was the number one star, number two star of November, uh, number one star of the number week. One star of the week, number two of the number two of the star in the NHL in November. Uh, playing the entire month without Gabe, without Miko, and all I could think of was all the people in who who have always said about Nathan McKinnon. Well, he'd be nothing if he didn't have his line mates. Yeah. And there he was without his line mates. So you, you get two options there. Either you're saying that he really is just that good, or you have to give or you're giving Sackick unbelievable credit for some of the moves he made in the offseason to build that depth up, or some of each. Who would have thought that in the first two months of the season that you would see a test of that depth? And see them respond like that. It's and been like incredible. you said, they've spent the last month without two of their top three players. And they're still leading the league in or leading the conference, excuse me, in goals. There was a point, Jeffrey, there was a point where both of their goaltenders were injured. (laughs) And Adam Werner comes in and saves a game. I mean, the this team has faced hurdles that I don't think many other teams have faced. Teams have had injury trouble before, but not to this level. I mean, if you've seen the thing going around Twitter with it's a calendar and it shows the Av season and someone has sketched in who was injured during which game. And every game on that calendar in the entire month of, I think it's November, it shows you Lannis Gog injured here, Burakovsky injured here, uh, who, Calvert. Uh, Matt Calvert injured here, Philip Grubauer injured here. Uh, Pavel Francouz inju- injured here. It just keeps going. Uh, and then, <laughs> you know, we're coming on the air the day after the game in Montreal when Gabe Landeskog comes back, but then we hear that Nazem Kadri somehow got a lower body injury, which is the most popular form of injury that this team <laughs> struggles with in the game against Toronto. But yet again, this team is prevailing with that kind of depth. Yeah, I was talking with Aaron Anderson, one of our sports guys, last night on the desk when we were talking about just the team and Landy coming back and popping the net and in his in his uh, return, and he said, 
you look at the injuries that this team has faced, and they are 18, 8, and 3. Is that right? Uh,. Eight and three or eight and two, somewhere, yeah. somewhere in there. I don't think they've lost that many in OT. Yeah, that, that's that's incredible. I mean, that would have been start of the season if you'd said that would be our record. I would have assumed that great, we've had no injuries. Every a puck has bounced our way every time. That's how we've performed with all these problems. Yeah, this team gets healthy. This it's team scary. is dangerous. Yeah, I mean, you think about what Kale McCarr has done from the blue line. Watching that kid is just incredible. And I saw someone today. Uh, wrote a column for the Athletic talking about uh, Quinn Hughes. Oh yeah, and how he he's going to overtake he's going to overtake him mid season. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about for that. Calder. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, good luck. I I really I might actually save that tweet just to retweet it when Kale McCarr wins the Calder because this is not fluky play by him that he's getting lucky on these. The kid is that good. The kid's that good. He showed us that during the playoffs last year. Yeah, and then he comes back in and he's that good. And yeah, maybe his production slows a little bit. He's probably not going to have many two goal games like he had there for <laughs> for a little while. But but think about no. that. You look at his point totals right now, and in most seasons he'd be in consideration for the Calder if that was his end of the year numbers. And it's beginning of December. I was going to say, if he's not on the All Star team, oh jeez, they're they're he insane. He has to be. And if McKinnon's not the captain of the All Star team. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. And if McKinnon isn't the MVP this year of the league, I don't know what the league. Yeah. I, I mean, you can make the argument that Leon Dreisaitl might be. Uh, Connor McDavid is having a hell of a season. And the two of them Na have played every game on the same line. <laughs> but Nathan McKinnon has played through incredible adversity and done some pretty incredible things in that yeah. time. I mean, yeah, you take him out. And there's no way the Avs could have gotten through this month-long injury stretch anything close to respectable. No. I mean, as well as a lot of these call-up and depth guys have played, he has held it together. And while we're on the topic of Nathan McKinnon, we should mention the article the other day where he was talking about his deal, uh, his next contract coming up. and saying Which we have been worried about yeah, I <laughs> in mean, the past. You look at uh, Miko Rantanen's making more money than he is right now. Yeah. And Nathan McKinnon is one of the best players in the world. Yes should be in the top five salaries in the NHL. No question. Which I think, I was talking with Johnny Kurt, who's been on this show before, and Johnny said, even after he said this, which I believe it was in a, an interview with Forbes? I think so. Or Sportsnet? I don't know. It was getting passed around all over the place. <laughs> but he said that he wants to win and that he's willing to take less money to do so. He wants to win with this team. And from what he sees, and you could tell, you watch him on the ice, you see him get frustrated when yeah. things aren't going the team's way. Guy's just a competitive yeah. guy. But the fact that he puts it out there that he's willing to take less money. If I'm Joe Sackick, I'm not trying to save money there. No. I want to reward this kid. And especially if he's coming out and making public statements saying that he will take less money, I still want him to be in the top His five. agent is smashing his head against the wall. But oh, my gosh. <laughs> Absolutely. But His no, I mean, agent would like a piece of that. <laughs> exactly. But like you said, I mean, it, you don't shortchange the kid by any stretch. But it has to be comforting to know that, okay, you know, we're coming. All these guys' contracts are coming up over the next few years. You want to keep this core together. You can look out and say, okay, open market. McKinnon should be making what? 12, 13? Yeah. Well, I mean, more than that. Yeah. I mean, they, if Miko Rantanen's making 12000 or $12,000 12 12 million. Million, <laughs> 12, a month. Poor Miko. Uh, if uh, he's making $12 million, Okay, you're right, you're right. I I think my brain is still two seasons ago. Um, so you look at, okay, you know, 14, 15. But to, to know that if you can make the argument, hey, can we sign you at 13, keeps you the highest paid player on this team, but it lets us get this other depth positions dealt with. Knowing that he would be okay with that, maybe not, not those exact numbers, but the, the idea behind it, that has got to just drop the, the stress level for a GM. Yeah. I think they're in great shape with that. I think the other thing that, that shows how much or how well the abs are, are right now, how well off they are, I should say, is if you look at the turmoil in other locker rooms around the NHL right yeah. now, the story, the Bill Peters story in Calgary, uh, Calgary, Calgary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Mike Babcock situation in, oh, in Toronto. 
I mean, look at uh, number one. Look at how much Tyson Berry's turned around since since yeah. Mike Babcock's left that locker room. You hear about these situations in other locker rooms, yet you watch these guys, and these guys legitimately seem to like each other. They seem to lead each other to make each other better. Jared Bednar seems to be a very. There were so many doubts about him for the longest time, yeah. and I think all of that is invalid. And I was, I was part of that. I mean, I'm not. I gonna, was part of that. I'm not going to try and. Oh, I knew it from the game. No, I mean, after that first season, I was saying, okay, you know, maybe it's not his fault. This is an awful team, but you got to hold the coach responsible at some point. Man, I'm glad they didn't listen to that. <laughs> yeah, so am I. I, I mean, it, the outside noise that first season, oh. it's almost like Patrick Waugh backed out because I think he knew it was about to be a season yeah. like that. Yeah. He had to have. But from even just from the person, like, if it doesn't tell you how smart Joe Sackick is going back, what, three years, four yeah. years now? How long ago was that season? Uh, three years? Because it was the crap season and then it was I the think playoffs, this, this is fourth, right? I think this is fourth year. They made the playoffs after the worst season in franchise history. Yeah. So think so so that that would have we're been year four year four, well three seasons three seasons we're in past year four, in yeah. year four, that's pretty incredible. That, that's a heck of a turnaround. So yeah. I I don't know I and, think things are going well for this team. Let's not screw it up. Let's hope that there's not you know some sort of fight in the locker room and then all sorts of bad blood and well and and you remember during that terrible season hearing some of the stuff about the players complaining about, you know, not everyone wanted to be there. Some people just, oh, you know, this season's over. I can't wait till it's done. We can get some time off. And you haven't heard that. I mean, they, they cleaned house of a lot of those guys. Uh, but, yeah, like going back to, you know, Bednar, just that sort of calming influence. When's the last time you saw the team give up on a game? Not, not even a full season, just a game. I, I, I mean, they're, they're down. I've seen them play poorly in games. Yeah, but then you watch the last two minutes and they are flying trying to get back in it. Yep. Even if it's, you know, multi goal games over out of reach, they want to end strong. And that's what good teams do. And it's so nice to see that consistently. Yeah. It's been fun to watch. And if this team doesn't advance quite a bit in the playoffs, it will be awfully surprising. Yeah. To a lot of people who have been watching this this season. Uh, the other news of the week. Uh, Altitude TV holding a digital town hall the other day um, and, and answering some questions, although I, I, and I don't mean to be critical of the guys. I like all those guys over there. One of the things that I've said from the beginning is that their main line talent should not be the ones answering questions about the negotiations. They should put their CEO. They should put whoever's in the room should be the one talking to the fans, because guess yeah. what? Kyle Keith <coughs> and Vic Lombardi aren't in the room. No. But you shove them out there in front of a, a bunch of people. And, and frankly, you don't give them that much ammunition. Like, it didn't sound like they, they had a guy on the phone who was uh, talking to them through some things. Who's like a consultant and used to yeah. be in the upper office there who could kind of answer some questions. But the things that people want to know, there wasn't they're not in a position that. to answer. And they're not saying if they're anywhere near a deal with Comcast. Yeah. I mean, Comcast holds an extraordinary number of televisions in this market. Yeah. It really does. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I could swear. I think the number is something like in the 40 percent, 40 percentile there. Of for that homes one in provider. the DMA. Yeah. For that one provider. So you think about all those people who are missing out on games still. They couldn't give us an answer of, A, how far are they apart? I mean, they kind of said that Comcast offered them 70 percent less. And they're trying to make the argument. We did find out some interesting things oh, yeah. that it's one hundred thousand dollars to produce a game, which um, sounds like a lot. But then you think about just the manpower that goes into every broadcast. And no, that, that sure. makes perfect uh, sense. Cameras. Yeah. You got to rent a truck. Um, you have to rent a crew, probably, because mm -hmm. you don't it's, have an in-house crew. You yeah. Have to that, rent. Those broadcasts are almost entirely freelance. Yep. At least in other sports. Yep. Same. Well, yeah. And, and, and I, I mean, assume it, it's the same. Yeah. Because you have visiting teams coming in. And exactly. Freelance. So, you know, that's pretty expensive. One of the things that they struggled to answer, and they finally kind of gave a bit of an answer to, was the streaming issue. Because mm -hmm. as Tom Green pointed out on the show a few weeks ago, if you look at the NHL and teams that stream, I think there are four total North American NHL teams that aren't available on a stream-only platform. Your YouTube TV your Hulu, uh, Fubu, which I'd never Fubo, which I'd never heard Some, of, and and I don't think they had that they had neither. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, I think I P- PlayStation it. View is the okay. other one. There are four teams. The Buffalo Sabres, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Colorado Avalanche, and the Vegas Golden Knights. Those, those are the teams that aren't available to stream. The answer we got from Altitude, which I, is relatively interesting, is this is a business, and the only way to make the money is through the broad-based distribution. Yeah. You know, they're getting paid for every subscriber to Comcast, to DirecTV, to uh, Dish Network. Yeah. Seems like there could be a bit of movement on the Dish Network front for them. Yeah, you would um, hope. I don't see... I, do you see any movement on Comcast? I mean, not in the right direction. I mean, when that the lawsuit came up a couple weeks ago, in my mind, that that's... I, I just assume from that point on, if you're at the point where you are actively suing each other, it's a lost season. Yeah. Like, they're not going to sort it out this year. Which I is, hope I'm wrong, but if you're at that level of animosity on it, and you're that far apart... I don't see how it gets sorted. Which out. is so sad. This team is so good. Yeah, you could draw so many hockey. Fa- Do you? How many times has hockey done this to itself? Yeah. Think about usually it. at the league level, but yeah. But th- like, think about yeah. The league level was what the ninety f- uh, or, or the or, no, there wasn't in the two thousands lockout. It was like a ninety three strike, I think. Yeah, and then yeah, the two thousand four, I think. Was ninety three the year that they stopped on ESPN? That might have been, because I mean that was that was a gold mine for the NHL. Oh yeah, being on ESPN, being that broadly streamed. Yeah, and I mean now they have NHL or NBC Sports Network a game like once a week or something like yeah. that. But and they they're on NBC, but not the same. Yeah, I don't know why. Why does this continue to get? It just seems from a fan's perspective here. Yeah, it seems like the league will do nothing but step in its own way. Yeah. To stop people from being fans of the game. And and from Altitude's point of view, looking at the Comcast situation, if if the if what Comcast is offering is that much lower, you're having to sort of play it off of, okay, we're going to possibly lose some fans right now. But is the value of that loss until the value of that loss is more than the difference in the argument? It still financially makes sense, which sucks for the fans. But you kind of get why they're doing it. At the same time, it, I, I I go back and forth on it. It's yeah. and it's I'm gonna maddening. play. I'm gonna play Monday morning quarterback here for a second. Going back to the streaming issue, I don't understand why they wouldn't be reaching out to one of those providers right now. And maybe it's because of their deal with Directv. Entirely but, possible. But why why not try to get on a YouTube TV? Why I mean, not? And I know it's not gonna it's not gonna pay the bills. I get it. Yeah. YouTube TV and Hulu, all these platforms aren't going to pay what you would get from a from a big provider like that. But don't you think that that would move the needle? If if it's yeah. available to a Comcast subscriber who the only reason the Comcast subscriber has Comcast is because they are watching Altitude. Don't you think you'd cut the cord? I would. Absolutely. I probably would. Then again, Comcast is my internet provider, so I don't know what I would do there. I mean, they, they discuss some of this stuff, but all I know is it didn't really move the needle that far. Uh, there was a big kerfuffle afterwards because there was this argument that Dish wanted. To, they, they, they kept saying, we invited Dish to participate in this, and Dish says, yeah, they did, and we wanted to come to the table, and then they told them you could only be in the comments. There was this, that whole kerfuffle. I don't know if that moves the deal forward or not. All I know is that it's just exhausting to fans, and yeah. I really hope that they get something done soon. Yeah, it's people are tired about hearing about it. We're tired about talking. We're tired. Ti- we're so exhausted talking about it. I'm just sick. I mean, I, 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 I the only way for me to watch the games legally is to sit at work. Yeah, where we get Direct TV. Yeah, and now we're getting it legitimate. Like. Before, we were getting a feed from Pepsi Center so that we so could, that we could highlights. get highlights. But now we can actually get DirecTV. Just time. Get it done. Get it done for the fans. There's so much good hockey that so many people are missing. Yeah. And, and, that's, that, and that's the that's Nuggets, not, too. Let's say that's not even touching on basketball. The Nuggets are an amazing team. The Nuggets are, are blowing the uh, the NBA into a thousand pieces. They are yeah. a phenomenal team. I uh, uh, coming up in just a second, we're going to talk to uh, Davey Roberts. He's a fan of the Colorado Avalanche from Snow Lake, Manitoba. You might not know the name. You you definitely will, would recognize him if you saw him. Yeah. 
if you've watched uh, Avs Twitter or you've seen anything that the Avs post on social media, you've seen Davey at some point. He's a huge fan. He's from way up north, and he joins us next. Colorado is a sports state. The Nine News app puts all of our great stories in one place. From the pros to the preps, you'll find it all. Plus the latest Broncos update from insider Mike Quist. The Nine News app. Download it today. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the the video piece of video from the Avs game the other night. Oh, boy. Boy, the other night now it was like a month ago. But uh, when the Avs were in Winnipeg playing the Winnipeg Jets, uh, cut away after an Avs goal, and I can't remember who scored it this time for some reason. Cause I, oh, oh, see, Davey already knows. <laughs> uh, cut away to the to the the uh, arena there, and you see an Avs fan standing in the concourse aisle there wearing an opera hat and pointing at the goal. That was Davey Roberts uh, from Snow Lake, Manitoba, who joins us now on the Cheap Seats line. Davey, how are you? Good, man. How are you? Great. So you have had a heck of a uh, of a few weeks here. You tell me about first. Let's start from the very very beginning. You're from Manitoba. What made you into an yeah. Abs fan? Yeah, like I was actually born in Winnipeg, never lived there. But uh, what made me into an Abs fan was uh, just. Growing up, I, I grew up a, a Maple Leafs fan, and in 95, I was 13 years old, and that's kind of when you start making your own decisions type deal, and the Avalanche came in, uh, the Patrick Wallace traded to them, and he was one of my favorite goaltenders. I, I grew up a goalie, right? I, I like all of those old days like that. Um, uh, I, I bought my first Avalanche jersey when I was 13, uh, and got them into mall, uh, saved up my allowance, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was cool. That's Bought cool. it in March of 1996. Still S- hanging on my wall. So that uh, that moment Steve was talking about, where uh, you know cameras catching you celebrating that McKinnon goal, how how fast mm-hmm. did you realize that that was becoming a thing? Because that's basically turned into a meme online. You know, like. It did, and and that's actually, I don't know, like, it was so overwhelming to me. Like, it it inspired me to to want to do something else. Like, I don't know, I was always, like, I was kind of not so, I didn't have as positive an outlook on life before I got all this positive feedback from other fans that seen this and said, man, that's cool, good job, you know, like, it meant a lot to me. I was like, why not like take a chance and and drive down and, and, and see if more people recognize me. It inspired me to start writing a book. I, I, I don't know, I'd like to do something in comedy. Really? Very cool. So so wait a minute. Yeah, it's, but it, it's I wanna back up okay. I wanna back up because that that's pretty serious. You're you're talking about you weren't in a great yeah. place in life. Where were you? Uh uh-huh. You know, I, I'm just stuck in a job while well, felt stuck. Like, I have a good job, but it, it, it's it's lonely living up where I am, too. And, I don't know, everybody kind of knows who I am. I, I didn't realize uh, that, that other people thought I was funny and stuff like that. You know, I got a, a really good following from people in Denver right now and all around the world, really. Um, it's... It's inspired me to want to do something different. Like, I'm actually going to start my own uh, kind of podcast. I don't know if that's what you call it. I'm, I'm horrible with the internet. But uh, my buddy offered to help me out, and we're going to start doing uh, a show of me talking to hockey uh, on on his website, the Hockey Tribune. Oh, yeah, and, sure. Uh, I know gonna, the Hockey Tribune. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually one of my friends from Snow Lake that uh, – I, I don't know if he's just an administrator, if he actually came up with the website. But, yeah, um, I'm going to start doing a, a show, hopefully this Sunday. I'm going over to his place, and we're going to brainstorm tonight. Very cool. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, I, I'm happy to yeah, hear yeah. that that boosted your spirits in that time because, I, I, I mean, yeah. when you, whenever you hear somebody's down um, and, and something like this happens to kind of change things around, it's always pretty impressive. Yeah. 
and, and that's part of the story that I'll be telling to you. Like, uh, I, I have lots of stories about traveling, going to sporting events and stuff like that, music events. But, um, yeah, like, I, I just want to promote a, a positive attitude. Like, a positive attitude could change people's lives. And I, I just want to show that to people, you know? Absolutely. Definitely. So, okay, so take me through that, yeah. that time then. So you go to this game, you instantly are a GIF sensation after uh, after the Nathan McKinnon goal, and then and then what do you decide to do next? Uh, I, I, I guess I sat on it for a little while, but uh, I don't know. Like, I, I knew that I had to do something. Like, this social media stuff is so finicky. Like, you could be a star one day, and then you're forgotten the next. And I was like, well, if there's still people just following me on, like I never had a Twitter account before that, and, and a person from this uh, Facebook group I'm in the Avs fam, they said, you need to start a Twitter account. And I did, and I immediately got like 100 followers. I was like, what the heck is going on here? But, uh, it, yeah, it, it, and then it just, it, it kind of kept on carrying it on from there. I, I, I was like, well, you know what, I'm going to take some time off of work. And I'm going to go down to Denver. I'm going to drive down. Because uh, that's way more of a story than flying down. Anybody can fly down. Even though it takes me seven hours to get to the Winnipeg airport to actually fly down. Oh, my God. It's that's nice. how far you are away from from Winnipeg is seven hours? Yeah, I'm seven hours north of Winnipeg. Holy so smokes. A small mining community up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something yeah. up there? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is like a pathway. Like, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Churchill. Like tourists go up there to watch polar bears and stuff. But I'm kind of halfway in between. It's on the. It's like the 55th parallel is, is where Snow Lake is situated on the globe. And I saw a video from you uh, the other day. I think you said you got back to Snow Lake after this whole trip, and it was what 15 below. Yeah. Yeah. It's Celsius. Celsius, uh, yeah. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm horrible at that. Yeah, That's me too. Yeah, yeah, that in kilometers to, to miles. Like, this, uh, this is one of those times that I wish... Kilometers to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish Alexa was around to try to break down this conversion for me here. Uh, but... <laughs> That's yeah, that's, no that's pretty darn cold. But okay, so so you decide to make this trip. Take me through your trip. What happens? Um, what do you want to know? Like I went, I went to uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan. I almost died in Regina. I blew a red light. That was my <laughs> that was my first time almost dying. But uh, I, I died I almost died a couple of times on that trip. I think. Oh my god! I was driving by myself. I don't. I don't travel like this. Is really that was the furthest drive I've ever driven, especially by myself. I've driven with other people, but uh, the only the furthest drive I had before that was actually just a few weeks before. Like when I went to that to that Winnipeg game, I actually drove down to Fargo. I carried on to Fargo from there. It's about four hours from from Winnipeg, but. Like that was my longest drive, 11 hours. Wow. It, it, it was a big jump for me. And all I did was set, set Google Maps, and, uh, <laughs> and that lady, she told me where to go, and I, I went there. <laughs> it's, a lot easier, it's a lot easier driving in the States than it is in Canada. They have a lot worse roads. Well, especially where I'm from in northern Manitoba. Like, you guys have, like, Two lane traffic. You don't have two lane traffic. You have one way, one way lanes there, and they're wider than our two way lanes up here. One way so lanes? Jeez. What if somebody's yeah, going the uh, other direction? Well, exactly. Well, like I mean, like you have your two way traffic, right? Oh yeah, no, right, I know. Okay. Three ways, you have your two way lanes. Yeah. Direction. Yeah. And those lanes are, are wider than what we we deal with up here in unforgiving shoulders. Wow. Okay. Toss up if you hit the hit the ditch, whether or not you get back out of it. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Uh, really, I, but, so I flew Saskatchewan, Regina. I, I crossed the border from there uh, into Montana. Uh, Beautiful up there. I did. I, it's absolutely. Oh, it's it, it really is, and I didn't like when I first. 
got into Montana, like it was late. I didn't cross the border until about midnight or one o'clock. And I figured I'd keep on going. I knew there was weather coming and stuff. I wanted to get as far as I could before hitting anything. But, uh, yeah, I drove about 14 hours straight before I stopped. And I, I stopped basically because I almost hit a deer outside, somewhere outside of Fallon, Montana. So wait a minute. Yeah, I just so, pulled the, so you yeah. almost die in Regina, and then you almost yeah. hit a deer yeah. in yeah. Montana. <laughs> Like oh, no. this is like I'd be looking behind your shoulder right now. I've seen that movie. Uh, what 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 is that? Final Destination. Final Destination <laughs> too many times. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> did they make like like twenty of those now? Uh, yeah, right. So, yeah. You've got some. You've got some time. <laughs> Uh, so you get down here to Denver and it seemed like you just, it was almost like an, like an awe inspiring experience. If I was following you on Twitter, uh, correctly. It, it really was like, uh, I'd never driven through the, well, I did when I was a kid, but I really don't remember any of it. But, and that's really what, why I'm almost getting into a couple of these near misses is just being a tourist, you know, <laughs> looking around. Oh, God, oh. our mountains are pretty. Yeah. Uh, they really are, and uh, man, like I, I drove through Wyoming, stopped in Wheatland. Uh, that's when I talked to to Lauren Jabara there, who ended up interviewing me at the game. Uh, and when she told me that she was going to interview me, I was like, "Man, I know a person up in in Edmonton. Like they're playing Edmonton. It's Edmonton versus Colorado. I'm going to Denver to see." And she's a radio personality. I got I, I called her up and got an interview with her on, <laughs> on her radio station, The Bear. And uh, I don't know. It was good. Like, yeah. It was a good starting point for me. I, I beat uh, I Connor McDavid a little bit there. I called him Connie McDavis. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it, it, Has that uh, gotten back to you? I know, I know it's like, uh, you know, things travel fast in Canada. Did that did that get back yeah, to Connor? I, I, I never heard anything really thing, anything back from it really, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I imagine if I went to Edmonton, somebody might have a little bit of harsh words for me or something. But whatever, <laughs> it's, it's all in good fun for me. That's a, I, I like chirping in hockey, but I like to try and keep it clean for because sports really for everybody, right? Yeah, it is. Like, sure. uh, these these two games that I went to like that that first little bit of fame I had like I had some beers in me I I was I had maybe two beers a period had a couple before the game and I I've had experiences where I've been one of those like kind of obnoxious fans and I've had experience where there's other obnoxious fans and really what I decided when I went to these two games I went to that Edmonton game and then the Hawks on on the Saturday. Oh, you got two I good ones. I decided that I wasn't going to drink or anything before or during the games. I had victory, victory celebration afterwards. You're but, those. You know. <laughs> you also learned that our craft but, beer is like, pretty pretty high in uh, in <laughs> in gravity and content there. That uh, it'll get you to oh, a man, place where you've never been. <laughs> and then the altitude too, like holy crap! I, yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I wasn't used to the altitude. I walked down. Uh, like the city center, I was staying at uh, at the Hilton Hilton City Center for a couple of days of my trip, and yeah, I was <laughs> I walked around to like uh, I don't know the that big music complex and just down the 16th Street Mall and stuff. And halfway through that, I, I thought I was going to die. I was so out of breath. It's like, oh, the altitude happens to so a lot of people. Know, big guy too. Like that has something to do with it. But yeah, that altitude definitely plays a factor. Yeah, it, yeah, it gets to you. You saw that. Uh, you saw it taking the wind right out of McDavid's sails, and then out of uh, Jonathan Tays and Patrick yeah, Kane's yeah. sails when they were here too. Yeah, I, 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 like, uh, I was. I, I was in prime position to trip the Oilers during that game. Like, I was standing right behind the penalty box. Like, I was there for their warm-up, and I was beaking every single one of them that skated by me. I, I, <laughs> I, lost, I, I lost eyes. <laughs> like, oh, man. I just remember this one. Uh, James Neal, 
he skated by. Uh, I like got his attention, <laughs> and he locked eyes with me. And I just booed him. I just put both thumbs up. <laughs> he just, I, I don't think he knew what to do. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, yeah. What's I that? Very vocal. What's that experience like? Because as an Avs fan who lives somewhere else, this is the first time you've ever been to a home game, right? You were like most fans perspective is we go to the games cause it's the hometown team. We go to more home yeah. games than away games. And then when Jeff and I go out of town to games, it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting being in the other barn. What's that experience like from a guy who only can watch the team from afar and then finally gets to come to a home game. Wow. And you know what? Like it's, I have to be honest with you. It wasn't my first home game. I actually flew down uh, last April and went to game four of round one against the Flames, where I, I think they won 3-2 in overtime. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, that was my first bit of overtime hockey, too. I was completely amazed. I was sitting right in that same spot where I was for the Oilers game. I was right behind the, the visiting penalty box. And... <laughs> Those are just such great seats. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm used to going to different because I don't really have a hometown uh, team. Like I guess we got the the Winnipeg Jets, but uh, lots of people ask me, well, "How are you a Winnipeg Jets fan? Why are you an Avalanche fan?" Well, I don't really know how to explain it to them, but that's just my team. You know, I I decided to be an avalanche fan and i've stuck with it like i I was a bandwagon jumper in 95 basically i was a leaf fan before that, that. but that was when the I bandwagon was, was built like the bandwagon <laughs> like it yeah. didn't exist before 1995 so like you're a tradition you're you're a you've been with this team the entire time yeah like and i had uh like i i i followed the nordiques a little bit uh before that like they had a they had a a rivalry with the Montreal Canadiens. Like, I remember Patrick Waugh and Ron Hextall, the <laughs> Montreal Canadiens and the, and the Quebec Nordiques just facing off against each other, like getting in fights and stuff. And it was, that was some good old old time hockey. Uh, like, I love that kind of stuff. I loved the chippiness of Ron Hextall back in the day. He was one of my favorites growing up. Like, I have so many favorites too, though. My all time is probably Eddie Balfour. He's a, a Carmen Manitoba boy. And uh, yeah, like there's just so many inspirational guys that play the game. And being a goaltender, like I always kind of thrive towards goaltenders, you know. Well, and you I also always... you grew up in the golden age of goaltenders. I mean, if you think about it, like yeah, you're, like exactly. you mentioned, like the Balfour. Dominic Hasek, yeah. uh, Patrick Hasek, Waugh, man. Uh, Brodeur. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even I'll throw Chris Osgood yeah. into that mix because Ozzy was up there yeah, as well. Osgood, you know, good. Like back when with the Red Wings, when they when we were in the same uh, division or whatever, before that first big mix up, <laughs> man, that rivalry between Detroit and Colorado back oh. then. Like I remember watching those back in in the ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight era there, or whatever. Man, what. That, that was some of the greatest overtime hockey I ever watched. Uh, like playoff hockey, overtime hockey. Like that's, I kind of miss that. I miss that rivalry. I don't feel like Colorado really has. A, I don't feel like the Avs really have a, a rivalry really anymore. Not not something as intense as that. Like yeah. Yeah. them and the and the Red Wings, and then them and the Oilers also too. Like they had they had some. Bitter rivalries in the playoffs back in the day too. You forget about yeah. it. I we the Hawks were in town the other day, and I, I was watching yeah. the broadcast here at work, and I I completely uh-huh. forgot about the response to Jeremy Roenick uh, from oh, yeah. Patrick Waugh when he said I'm I couldn't hear him. I have two Stanley Cup rings in my ears. Oh yeah, I you know it's like <laughs> that stuff doesn't happen <laughs> anymore. Know, it doesn't happen anymore in hockey. No man. Yeah. No, like everybody's friends. Like and. It, like it's nice that there's no like oh really really hardcore rival like where fans are beating up fans and stuff like that. But there's no reason why there can't be like good old fashioned clean chirping going on. Well, you know, yeah. Fans. Like here's here's even at this. Uh, Go ahead. At that, at that Hawks game, I was just gonna say like 
I didn't realize, like, I guess there's Hawks fans everywhere, but there must have been 3,000 people wearing Chicago Blackhawks jerseys. Welcome to Pepsi Center, man. Yeah. 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 Well, the problem is when you live in a city full of transplants, I mean, you get fans from every single team in that building. is. uh, That's that's what's so neat about Denver, too, is people are from everywhere. You talk to somebody, and I was talking to people that were from North Dakota and stuff. Like, uh, when I'm I was telling them about when I went to Fargo for the Slayer concert back uh, November 18th, I think that was. Yeah, it was just just a couple of days after that, that game in Winnipeg I went to at the Avalanche. But I'm going to try and go down. I'm going to try and come down again for uh, the 31st, uh, go to the Jets versus, Jets versus the Avalanche there in Denver again. I don't want to keep on getting seen type deal. Put some miles on the car, man. We love it. We love well, having you gonna, here. I'm, I'm going to drive down to Winnipeg this time and oh, fly. Oh, take the, and fly and, and fly. Make it a little bit easier. Yeah. But yeah, it's still, it's still a lot of travel. You're, I say you're still putting miles on the car. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Well, uh, Davey, I cannot thank you enough. We want to meet you in person uh, at a game coming up soon. Yeah, well, I'll keep in touch, and uh, maybe we'll try for the 31st there. Like I got a lot more stories to tell guys. You could like watch my my uh, stuff that I'll be putting out. I'm gonna. It'll learn a lot more about me and what I'm what I'm. I don't know. Trying to do definitely what it stands for definitely. Yeah, you can never have too but many. Thank uh, you a lot podcasts. for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank. Well, thank you for coming on the show, man. We appreciate it. Ho- hope the weather warms up <laughs> in. For uh, having that. Hope the weather wor- warms up uh, in Snow Lake. It, it, we're going down to minus 30s here in the next few days, but it's nothing that we can't deal with. That's what we have to deal with. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, uh, wear, a, wear a warm coat. We'll see you on the 31st, brother. <laughs> Will do. Thanks a lot, brother. <laughs> have a good one. Take it easy. All right. <laughs> yeah. Davy Roberts, uh, at Gravy Davy, and there are a bunch of numbers in there. Let me see if I can actually pull it up for you. On Twitter, he's – at I just hung up the phone on him at Gravy Davy seventy three uh, on Twitter. Uh, that is Davy Roberts. That is a trip. I, I I think the longest single drive I've done is about eleven hours, and that's what got him to the border. <laughs> I know. Think about it. Can, can you imagine living seven hours away from the closest airport? Yeah, and living that far north. I mean, there's not a ton that far north in Canada. I, people need to remember that the next time they're complaining about how long it takes to get to DIA. I mean, when we worry about, oh, you know, it's it's going to take me you know, 30 minutes. Yeah, it, it could be seven hours. It could be worse. Yeah, it could be. Uh, we'll uh, go through some of the feedback. We've had quite a bit since we've been off for a week. Uh, and we will take a look at what's ahead for the Colorado Avalanche when we come back. Coloradans are passionate about Colorado, and at 9 News, we love to hear all about it. Call, email, or find us on social media. 9 News listens. The music's back. I want to find someone who plays a trumpet and bring them in and have them like perform this live. Oh, I don't know. With that kind of... Uh moves jazz moves there syncopation is that what they call it where you're like not playing notes that are on paper is that syncopation no that's when you're playing offbeat oh <laughs> i should have paid more attention in music class <laughs> when i was i was a singer i never learned how to read music i could bring my sax in and i could try Ooh, that would be fun <laughs> That might be for the uh, for the outtake reel. Give, give me a few weeks to remember how to play it. It's been a while. Gotten tons of feedback. Oh, my gosh. All sorts of it. Um, and my phone uh, cheap seats email is not loading. All of it. Because we've been off the air for so long. But uh, I'll tell you, Scott Hicks wrote in, has a general question about the NHL. Says, why is it that when NA- the NHL has a special jerseys for certain nights, hockey fights, cancer, military appreciation night, that the teams are not allowed to play the actual game in those jerseys? Yet all minor league teams have specialty jerseys and they can wear them during the game. Why won't the NHL let the teams play in those jerseys? I, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Uh, if we ever get the commissioner on. Open invitation, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, those talks never really went anywhere. 
<laughs> some guy was like, oh, yeah, like here's the guy you need to talk to. And I emailed him, and I still haven't heard anything. And he probably sat there, read the email, laughed, and moved on with his day. Yeah, he probably listened to the show. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. A few minutes of the show. But yeah, that, that we will put that on the list of questions for the commissioner if and when we are able to kidnap him and bring him into the studio. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I don't know what the answer is to that because the Avs had the specialty jerseys for hockey fights cancer, the purple Good for jerseys. warm-ups and pre-games and then swapped into the normal ones. Um, I mean, it, 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 there's no rule as far as I'm aware saying they have to wear their official jerseys. I think it's just a, it's probably a marketing thing. Just ask Gary Batman. That's the that's the uh, official Gary Bettman sounder. Just a bunch of people booing. For the record, Steve has put his laptop with the sound effects on a side chair, so I can't see the screen now. I honestly thought that was someone outside the door yelling at us. <laughs> <laughs> we are using this uh, studio at a very awkward time of the day. I'm sure lots of people are not very happy about that. Uh, back to the email. You guys have been all over the email lately. Uh, Carol wrote in to say, Claire Villano is my aunt. I love Claire is the best. Love this email. Uh, Jim, the Predators fan in Nashville, is my older brother. I'm so happy to hear her on your podcast. She's amazing and a wonderful woman. You should have her as a guest speaker often. As she said, she has three boys, all very successful in Denver in different arenas. No pun intended. Uh, she knows and follows pretty much all sports and is an avid fan of anything Denver. Thanks for doing what you do, Carol, in Atlanta. First time, long time. <laughs> Carol. It was great having her on. Oh, Claire? Yeah. She's amazing. Uh, and let me open my email. Reminisce about Claire for a second. I'm going to open the rest of the email. <laughs> As Steve leans out of the frame. Um, no, I mean, I, we, we talk about being longtime hockey fans. You know, I do at least. And I've been a fan as long as the Avs have been here. And I think of that as a longtime hockey fan. And then to have her come in and, and talk, tell stories about seeing the New York Rangers in 1958. It's like, that's not, that's not longtime fan. That's, you know, you've watched the game evolve. You've seen the different eras. Can you imagine what it's it looked incredible. like back then? I mean, no one wore helmets. <laughs> and the goal, like, I mean, think about goalie gear back then. You get yeah. smacked with a vulcanized piece of rubber. Yeah. That's, you spit out a tooth and come back out for the second period. <laughs> well, that still happens. Uh, it's true. Uh, but... But yeah, that just the game has evolved incredibly yeah. since that point. Claire was just a joy to have on the show. Oh, yeah. Hope she's listening right now. We had so much fun. Uh, Claire and her friend came down here to, to shoot that interview. Um, also on the topic of Claire's interview, I wrote in. Let me pull my computer up so I can actually read it. <laughs> it says, hey there, not sure how I found your podcast, but I'm a diehard Avalanche fan, was listening to your interview with Claire. I moved to Nashville in 2014 and went to a few Avs Preds games when I moved there. I can tell you firsthand, that arena is crazy and very anti-visiting team. The fans have a chant for everything, and most are just plain stupid. <laughs> I get teams going for the home team, or I get, or get the teams going for the home team, trying to make a home ice advantage. But the way they act is part of the reason I stopped going to the games. I am sure I would have had a different opinion if I was a Preds fan, but it is pretty ridiculous. The one good or bad thing about Bridgestone Arena is that it is literally in the middle of downtown Nashville. So after the games, you can stumble downtown to the bars. I had a neighbor who used to work for the Preds front office, and he said they adopted all their chants from college. Uh, they do these in unison. Yeah, they are college hockey chants, oh, yeah. by the way. Uh, I'm glad I er, he, he said sometimes you can even hear the chants on TV. I'm glad I no longer have to deal with their BS since I left Nashville a few months ago. Feel free to mention this on the podcast, but please, oh, leave my name out. Can you bleep his name out? Absolutely. <laughs> I didn't put his last name in I, there. I realized right after you said that. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll clip that. <laughs> <laughs> it shows. I we got this it. email. Here's his phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and Evan uh, also wrote in to suggest that we get on Matt Sokolowski, who is the Avs athletic trainer. He has and, been someone we've talked about yeah. uh, in, in our planning meetings, and yeah, we would love to talk Honestly, about. we should probably leave him alone right now because he's pretty it's busy. a little busy. He yeah. needs, needs his time off. A lot of people <laughs> uh, recovering uh, from injury right now. I, I feel like we could do an entire interview just based on the question, what does lower body injury mean? And just let him go. <laughs> it's just a wide open array of different things. I mean, and it's weird because he can't well, really mention any of them. No, yeah. Because you can't say like, oh, yeah, game 
it, it we will, all assume he broke his foot. I mean, if, if we get a chance to talk to him, it's all going to be purely hypothetical. And, um, and what, mostly bleeped out. Yes. Uh, <laughs> if you ever had a, you know, Steve, as, as a reporter, you've run into this. When you request government documents and they send it to you and the page is entirely blacked out and redacted. Redaction. That's basically what that interview is going to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, we thank you to everybody who, uh, who wished us a happy Thanksgiving when we took the week off. Yeah. Uh, Hope so, you all had a good time. What is ahead for the Colorado Avalanche uh, after we release this show? Uh, let's see. More Rantanen and Landeskog. <laughs> and hopefully no more injuries. Yeah. Can't. I hope Nazem Kadri gets back in the lineup pretty quickly. I, um, that, that one seemed a late enough decision that you'd think it's not too major. If it was something serious, they would have announced it earlier. Oh, yeah. That's I true. I would hope. Yeah, they must. They would have had to. Yeah, right? sort of see how he did in practice. Like, all right, we'll give him a day off. Uh, so when we return, the Avs will be in the middle of a home stretch, which uh, I saw a stat while we were away that said the Avs are one of the teams in the league with the least home games so far this season. I would believe that. I think they're like third. I think there are two more teams that have fewer home games. Like two five-game-plus road trips already. So <laughs> we've got uh, we got the Flames on Monday. Uh, and the fly and the Flyers after we release this episode that uh, that Wednesday. Wednesday game we will be at that one we will be at that Hooray. one not in the cheap seats we will be in the sweet seats the sweet <laughs> I've never experienced a sweet at Pepsi Center uh, I I've been to a Nuggets game in one but the good folks here at Channel Nine are rewarding us and other people and other people <laughs> from the station uh, with a special night at the Abs game That'll so be that should be pretty cool then the Devils on Friday uh, then the Abs go on the road. To a game where we will be <laughs> Monday night, December 16th in St. Louis. So there That's you go. That's coming up. <laughs> right? <laughs> we might release some episodes of this show from the road. So watch your, uh, your feed. We're going St. Louis and Chicago two nights later. Uh, and then the Avs. I didn't realize this, but the Avs actually have a home, uh, a, a back-to-back. Yeah. So there's a game that night that we return. Which... We might make an effort to go to because it's Star Wars night. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's Star Wars. I didn't even think of that. And Star Wars is released the next, the next day. day. <laughs> wow. I, we, we might fall asleep partway through it, but we might try and make that one. Yeah. <laughs> Big road trip coming up. Uh, St. Louis. If you've got St. Louis and Chicago suggestions, send them to us. Uh, cheap seats at 9news.com. Or at nine cheap seats. Mostly, you want to talk about, we want to find somebody who can who can actually be on the show when yeah. we're in St. Louis and yeah. Chicago. Um, probably emphasis on Chicago. We have some fallback ideas for for St. Louis. But Chicago, yeah, I mean, if there's if you know someone out there, whether they're you know, a diehard Avs fan living in Chicago or uh, are, just, are a diehard Blackhawks fan who would like to talk some trash, yeah, we're down with that. Apologize, a little Paul Simon played uh, <laughs> while you were... <laughs> Well, we like, don't have the rights to that, Steve. I know. <laughs> it's. I think we're in safe harbor because I think I only played like maybe a tenth of a second of it. But we're in the cheap seats because we blew our budget on legal fees. Yeah. Uh, so as far as going to that game on that Thursday night. Destiny. It is our destiny. <laughs> I spent all that time pulling up the Darth Vader soundboard. It was so worth it. I can, yeah. <laughs> Um, so a lot coming up. We want to know who, who we should talk to in St. Louis and Chicago. We're going to try to take the show on the road. Uh, we also want to know further episodes. Who do you want to hear from? Matt Sokolowski. We'll try to get him. Um, if you have a fan, these fan stories are so much fun. Just yeah. hearing from Davey Roberts talking about his fandom from all the way up north. I still can't cool. get over how long of a drive that was. And I can't get over just... how long of a drive it is to get to Winnipeg. Yeah. Think you're, about that. You're basically doing Denver to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Is how far you have to go for an airport. More than that, yeah. Because Denver Albuquerque. to Santa Fe, Denver to Denver to Santa Fe is what five and a half hours. Five, yeah, probably more like Albuquerque. That's <laughs> and even further than Albuquerque, honestly. Because yeah. what Albuquerque is like forty five minutes south. Not of all that. of us drive as fast as you do, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you take the uh, the back roads, you could get down there uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, it should be interesting. In the next week, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this trip with yeah, you. Definitely. We have one more taping before we hit the road. I'm guessing, like unless the day before. <laughs> unless we want to just tape the next show on 
this is probably a conversation we should have in the office, not on the air. This is our behind the scenes. But take we could we, we could just that. we could just tape on uh, on sun, what, like at the airport or something. Yeah. People will be like, what What are they doing? Why do they have microphones set up? We'll have to see how early our flight is. <laughs> we I don't think we have uh, we have early bird seating, so we won't oh. be in the cheap seats on the plane. There we go. So. Uh, but betraying our name. big road trip coming up for us uh, and we'll update you on that let's hope the Avs keep this winning streak alive at least through Chicago <laughs> and Carolina and Carolina because we'll probably be there for that too that's true <laughs> busy couple of days because yeah we're going to go see the Star Wars movie the day afterwards yeah. too you know we, we went one and two on our last big road trip following the Avs so it'd be nice to get a winning road trip I feel like they could. St. Louis yeah. might be a challenge. St. Louis is a very good team, but they should they should be Chicago. Boy, they have embarrassed Chicago in their building and then at home. Which I love so much. I do too. <laughs> Especially in front of a group of uh, Chicago fans <laughs> at Pepsi Center. Somebody was really angry because uh, it wrote me a note because Bernie squirted uh, ketchup all over <laughs> someone. It was, it was, you know, if you're wearing an Avs jersey, it blends in with a burgundy. You deserve it. Yeah. You kind of deserve it if you're wearing a Blackhawks jersey. Sure. See you next week. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of Steve Stager and Jeff Sautel, who have absolutely no business covering sports at all. They're just fans. You can tell them how wrong they are by tweeting at the show at 9 Cheap Seats or email cheapseats at 9news.com. <laughs>